So uh, I'm always thinking that uh, transition of existing system uh, based on commercial software to open source software is uh, more challenging than creating the new uh, system based on the open source software because you should deal not only with the migration of data and functionality but also with the mindset of the users that working with the system for many years. So today I will uh, present you a project, uh, part of which, uh, one part of which was uh, transition National uh, River Lake Cadastre of Lithuania to open source solution and what kind of challenges and uh, issues we face out and how we manage to deal with this. So first of all, what contains, what data contains National River Cadastre in Lithuania? So rivers, lakes and ponds, uh, this is usual. And we have about 10,000 register uh, these objects in Lithuania and Cadastre. Uh, as well, we registering uh, hydro, uh, we registering also engineering uh, facilities like hydro power plants, culverts, dams, and so on. And uh, also cadastre contains of uh, additional data like river basins, catchment areas, uh, and uh, so on. And uh, what is make really uh, important of this cadastre, because this cadastre also leads to some uh, restriction, uh, uh, legal restriction, for example, for agriculture activities or buildings or constructions near the uh, cadaster objects uh, and also from the GIS part is uh, also worth to mention that the data sets is not the big enough but uh, actually all the objects are should be related uh, to each other for example uh, hydropower plants should be linked to the uh, river and uh, dam should be known how, uh, the uh, lamp from the dam to the river end and so on and this Everything should be calculated uh, and uh, presented in the cadaster. So before we started, uh, what kind of system we have found? And uh, this is uh, yeah, uh, commercial-based software. And this is uh, quite usual uh, tech stack for Lithuanian uh, enterprise JS systems. So on the database uh, part, you have uh, Oracle uh, with uh, Arc, uh, RGS SDI schema. Uh, everyone can have opportunity to deal with IJS as the I schema understands that this is quite tough uh, because you don't understand quite well what you're getting from the schema. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, they use also Alfresco for uh, data uh, for document management system on the database. Uh, for but um, actually, what we have found out in the database that this database has. I mean, almost any restriction on the data side. So uh, the tables doesn't have uh, relationships, doesn't have rules for automatic calculation of the data. And what's, it was really strange because it's cadaster. So how they are calculating this? And uh, the tricky part was that uh, on the desktop part where the cadaster managers are editing and creating and, and, and registering the data, they have a custom made closed sourced uh, plugin uh, which works on the ArcGIS, uh, on ArcMap, and uh, all the logic of the calculations, uh, even the classifiers or, or, or some uh, dimensions that use in calculations was hard coded in this plugin. Uh, so it was nice uh, thing to find out. Um, and uh, uh, also for the service and web part, this was quite the usual uh, stack. So for the publishing the WMS, uh, IGS mapping services, I was using uh, IGS server. And for reporting, so for the, all the cadastres should uh, uh, should have, uh, have possibilities to get uh, official extracts from the cadastre. So they used the Jasper report server. Uh, this, uh, this was solely used only for this uh, PDF extract. And for the web part, they use RGS uh, uh, API, but actually we found out that this uh, uh, libraries was so old that we understand from the beginning that we are implementing new web map, uh, but not deal with the old one because it's not uh, actually uh, possible to update uh, uh, some of the API, uh, some of the libraries like uh, uh, RGS or, or and, and, and front-end libraries. So uh, about this plugin, uh, I understand the, the idea about this, but actually when you have the cadaster and you put everything on the plugin, 
uh, you actually doesn't have validation on the database part. So it's like you are creating uh, you know, front end and back end and all the logic uh, and validation is doing only on the front end, but not in the back end. But you not uh, uh, strict the access to the data on, or edit data uh, not from the plugins. So uh, what leads to the uh, errors in the database and actually we, what we have found out that uh, some of the not some, but a lot of the, <laughs> the objects uh, have, for example, duplicated cadaster ID. Some rivers uh, has defined uh, parent rivers that even doesn't exist in the cadaster, uh, and uh, some uh, IDs was miscalculated, and so on. It, and it's normally understandable because some edits probably was made not to the plugin uh, or the plugin crashed and so on and from database parts there was no validation even the uh, fields that are described as requirement uh, required from this plugin parts uh, was actually not uh, defined as required uh, in the database part and uh, so at the end we face out that uh, you actually cannot uh, uh, understand how it works and actually cannot understand from the database part how it was made. Okay, uh, and uh, another tricky part, not tricky actually, this is understandable, but, uh, understand, understandable when you don't know how your database work is uh, performance issues because initial web, <laughs> web map load was about 30 seconds. 40 seconds, so you understand that you open it, the map and wait for the 40 seconds just to load it. But uh, again, it's understandable when you don't have any strategy for calculating spatial indexes, when you have quite stuff uh, structure of the schema uh, on the database parts, uh, when you don't have any actually strategy how you want to show all the data because you just put all the data directly from the database on the high scale levels and you just try to show them. If on desktop it doesn't work great, so on the web it will work even worse. Uh, and um, uh, as well there was also some kind of uh, interesting uh, issues, but I, as far as I working also with uh, S3, as the I schemas, uh, so it's kind of usual to find out that uh, on one database they are putting like a lot of systems uh, and uh, just separate them by schemas. So you actually doesn't can measure uh, which actually data schema and so on is actually breaking up uh, the data. For example, inserts and so on. So let's get started. And uh, uh, the first thing we issue actually was not the technical issues because uh, we have some strategy how to deal with this, but actually attitude towards the open source GS from the cadaster manager. Because uh, even though uh, the cadaster worked quite badly, uh, but they thought that if we try to migrate to open source and redo this in open source, probably. Uh, at the end, they will doesn't have any, <laughs> not even the badly working system. <clears throat> and uh, I quite understand them because uh, in Lithuania we don't have uh, like a lot of good examples or even of, I think this is one of the first example that national uh, cadaster is based on open source JS. And you know, the rumor from uh, <clears throat> vendor uh, company that rules the <laughs> Lithuania is actually is also not uh, helping here, uh, and um, so what we thought to do, how we thought to deal with this. So we take this MVP uh, methodology from startups. So what is MVP? So you have a minimal viable project uh, pro, uh, a product. So on one part you have minimal, so bare bones of the system. So which only contains the fundamental components like GIS server, database, and so on. On the other part, and you can build it quite uh, quickly because you can just run it on those different dockers and you have set up like in one week. And on another part, you have viable projects, so it's a final product with all the functionality the cadastral manager needs. But you can build it only after the year or after eight months and so on. So, uh, what we are trying to build at the first glimpse, so it was sufficient enough uh, solution just to 
introduced this uh, to cadastro manager and actually after the first two months we already have the first uh, solution so first setup and uh, give them uh, to the cadastro manager uh, and then at the first uh, <laughs> at the first uh, demo they already saw that this working much faster uh, at work and they don't need actually do some manual inserts because a lot of inserts was made uh, automatically on the database part and uh, what was great that uh, later on they are suggesting a feature or a requested features based on this setup not from the uh, not from the you know memories how rjs or, or something else works so it was really great the introduction and great uh, how say uh, the circle of uh, managing uh, all the uh, updates and um, we have also faced out uh, some uh, general requirements for our system so uh, that as i mentioned we use uh, this project was the part of the bigger project so uh, the main idea was if you're building something built uh, to be reusable so we, the biggest our our reusable component was web map uh, also priority uh, uh, on open source, not only use open source, but if we something built, uh, open source it also. So we have already 35 uh, 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 this, uh, repositories open source to the community of Lithuania, uh, no, of course, and for the rest of the world. And uh, unified deployment, so we have set up uh, development, staging and production uh, environment, uh, and uh, so Every deployment is uh, based on GitHub Actions and uh, also what is kind of usual when you're dealing with code, but when you're dealing with the GIS, for example, publishing services, it's quite, I think, new uh, and uh, was introduced also for the GIS specialists. And uh, also one part is really important for me as well because uh, uh, when you're dealing with large GIS systems, usually there is a tricky part how you develop locally so everything uh, in our system was lo uh, based on the docker images so the setup of the local environment just uh, you know the running uh, three or five docker images and you can test it for example Q QGIS uh, server not only how it works with your local database but just changing environmental and quickly check up uh, how it deals with the the production database and if it's uh, your service is running okay or it's slow or not so it was really a uh, good experience uh, and the bigger part as I mentioned so it was only one part of the project and uh, actually the, the whole project calls biodiversity information platform and it contains more of the 10 components that uh, use GIS it contains a little bit more component but uh, 10 components are using GIS and uh, also the, this bio, uh, diversity platform uh, on based on this platform is also uh, implemented protected and invasive, invasive species uh, informational system and this lake uh, and the river cadaster as well and it was uh, implemented as in-house solution so uh, ministry of environment uh, uh, set up uh, the in-house uh, development team together with the spatial analysts, uh, not spatial, uh, with the analysts, UX designers, and actually GIS was quite small part of this, uh, and uh, I was uh, only one <laughs> GIS specialist in this project. Um, so tech stack we used, uh, so I, I think it's quite basic, uh, but uh, let's, um, let's review it. So on database parts, uh, we are using uh, PostGIS with PostgreSQL and uh, GDAL for uh, automating uh, data integrations and uh, updates. And uh, we're also running uh, GDAL uh, based on the GitHub Actions. So we kind of like GitHub <laughs> Actions, as you can see here. And from, for the server side and uh, for the publishing service uh, for WMS and WFS, we are of course using, not of course, but we are using QGIS server. Uh, Martin, we use and we introduced this technology a little bit later for uh, uh, publishing vector uh, tile services for directly from 
uh, PostgreSQL database. It's usually used, for example, for grids, uh, for overview layers, for example, statistical grids and so on. And uh, because we introduced vector tiles as overview layers, we saw that our national base map is actually not fit our needs. So we built our, our national vector uh, based, uh, national base map uh, uh, based on the uh, uh, national cadaster uh, cadaster data, uh, georeference cadaster data using Planet Tyler, and for the desktop part we use desktop uh, QGIS and cartography, Smaputnik, and also <coughs> uh, QGIS desktop. So uh, actually, when we first uh, uh, opened it and, and, and showed the demo for uh, cadaster managers, and they saw QGIS form, they thought that. Uh, we migrated this old plugin <laughs> to the QGIS because actually it looks a little bit uh, similar and uh, the idea was uh, to uh, standardize the way how they uh, inserting the data but um, and also uh, so we feel actually use QGIS forms a lot and uh, what is great about QGIS forms that you can show uh, relationships uh, one to many for example if you show the lake you can show also uh, rivers that inflows outflows uh, of the uh, lakes or, or or you can show nicely added history and so on and uh, also you can show uh, imageries, uh, images uh, related with this input or, or uh, allow to download the file from uh, the database or if external uh, sources. So, um, and also we use some virtual uh, attributes actually to decrease uh, the table sizes because uh, in all the system there was, they have like third of the, one third of the attributes dedicated only for example, uh, to show length in different units, and, you know, the length in the meters, kilometers, and so on. So we, for that, we just use uh, virtual uh, attributes and uh, doesn't uh, store them uh, in the database because uh, if you store in database, you should recalculate each time, so why to do this? Um, and uh, what is really nice about QGIS and uh, PostGIS integration that you can store uh, QGIS projects directly in the database. And what does it mean? So when the cadaster administrator come to the desktop and open it, uh, oh, only three minutes. Okay, so we store the QGIS projects in the database. So, uh, and the, in QGIS uh, project, we are storing uh, the custom tools based on the model builder. Uh, not model, model designer, and this uh, model designer calls uh, usually uh, custom functions from database. So it looks li uh, really simple, but actually what it takes, so it takes from form some parameters and just run uh, PostgreSQL functions, and we put these models inside the QGIS project. QGIS project is inside database, so each time they open it, the new, uh, they open it QGIS project from the database, this is always up to date. So strict uh, data model using standard database concept like relationships and so on, it was really strict. So uh, what is actually usual for, from the database part, but not usually from SDI part. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and we face out uh, really big problems with migration data because when you have strict data rules uh, and the database part and try to migrate, so actually during migration we fixed a lot of data that they have broken in, t in the older uh, uh, system. And for uh, this legal, uh, this uh, extracts we use uh, uh, materialized at views uh, with uh, JSON fields because we have some actually uh, quite uh, interesting uh, uh, one-to-many uh, relationship in the database uh, and actually our APIs are really lean because everything is uh, pre-calculated in the database and uh, also in database we are running PG uh, Chron to uh, schedule the tasks to uh, refresh materialized view each night or each hour, so it depends on the views we use. And uh, yeah, uh, the concept we, for, for all automated uh, uh, tasks we use functions and triggers, and all these calculations are integrated in the post GAS as a functions, and uh, uh, also. Uh, everything is stored as a GitHub with the migration to the database as, as um, a CLI process. And uh, actually for really big uh, updates of the data, for example, if we should take for external 
data uh, source uh, the data and update it. So we use also GitHub Actions because we really like it. And uh, the last part, so publishing, actually we use also uh, GitHub to publish uh, new uh, services. So uh, for example, you change something in QGIS uh, project, then commit it to the uh, GitHub repository, you're creating the pull request, and then you can deploy it uh, with the GitHub action to development, staging, on, or production uh, system already. And this is kind of similar as you working with the code uh, uh, management in the GitHub action, but actually your code is QGIS project. And uh, actually you are not putting the file on the QGIS uh, server, on the QGIS uh, uh, Docker uh, machine, but uh, uh, actually you're dealing with the GitHub and it's actually, for, for us, it's really great. I highly suggest them to check it out. Uh, our national vector tile base map, uh, which is uh, based on top of Planet Tiler, uh, because it's not uh, uh, based on the OpenStreetMap, but our, our, our national uh, cadastre data and uh, we map it to the open uh, vector tiles uh, uh, style uh, uh, schema, so it's uh, our national data sets, but with the uh, feel and touch uh, as uh, uh, used uh, in the open vector tile maps. And uh, of course, we are using PM tiles with the 300 megabytes, and uh, thanks for my colleagues uh, and open source about, is about not only communities, but then making friends, so I make a few friends, uh, buddies, can we take some beers <laughs> after the work? <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Sorry that taking a little bit uh, too much, or, or was really quickly. You can find my slide on slides on on uh, the website, conference website. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, Andros. That uh, was all good. Was all good. So, are there any questions? Uh, So I have a question, okay. and um, you said you know it, it's with the Ministry of the Environment, yes. and did other ministries like carefully observe, or were they involved, or did they show interest uh, in your work? Uh, yes, uh, we already have uh, two uh, ministry-based events for our ministries, and we set up like this competence small center for the shared information about. The project and also the solutions. Uh, and actually, in Lithuania, environmental ministry is really big uh, and uh, it deals uh, with the construction, environmental, and uh, land management. And uh, well, <laughs> actually, it's really big and it's enough uh, uh, agencies inside the uh, ministry that deal with this. And uh, actually, yeah, uh, we have already uh, new uh, systems that came up from the agencies. Uh, on, uh, on the umbrella of uh, ministry that are already set up in, uh, the open source solutions for that. But because usually what they need is like really simple GIS system, not too big, uh, not too small, but uh, as I mentioned here, this in the middle where you can just complete everyday tasks. And uh, if you show deeper, uh, if you look deeper, you can see that these tasks are quite, uh, quite uh, simple and not so, uh, so intelligent. <laughs> okay. Um, thanks. Yeah, Any thanks. other questions? Good. I, uh, yeah. Uh, have you also calculated of uh, how much uh, time and uh, money it took? Okay. I, I expected this question. Uh, uh, as I mentioned here, uh, it was in-house solution, so actually there was not. Uh, like based on the, you have what, half of million and just spend it out. Uh, it was based on calculation on hours. So I, uh, my part was about one and a half year and it took one third of my, uh, so it's about 30 hours per month from me. So as I mentioned, I was only one GIS specialist. So, uh, and other uh, uh, specialists like programmers and uh, DevOps, they are working in the ministry, so they take their time, <laughs> work time. So it's not uh, how to say spent additionally uh, to this project. So because it was in house. So actually, I'm only one was not who's working in the ministry, but just providing the my hours to this project. So it's 
And it took about uh, the whole uh, biodiversity platform to build, it took about two years. And this cadaster, it's about eight months. So it's. Okay, another round of applause. Thanks. Thank you.